So in today's video, we're looking at everything that concerns coming into the UK to work as a senior carer. And we're looking at eligibility, we're looking at what documentations you need, we're looking at how you are going to make this visa application, and we're looking at the benefits that comes with finally being successful in applying through this visa route. Let's get right into it. To be eligible to apply for you know this role as a senior carer in the UK, you have to be a qualified doctor or a registered nurse or you belong to a group of professionals called allied health professionals. And by allied health professionals, we mean people like speech and language therapists, we mean dietitians, occupational therapists, operating depart um, department professionals. So if you belong in any of these categories, what it means is that it, what it means is that you have got experience working with patients, working in hospital or other healthcare settings, and this strongly qualifies you to come into the UK and work as a senior carer. So what are the documentations you need to make this visa application? The number one thing you need is a valid passport. Listen, <laughs> before I came into the UK, yeah, in 2013, that was the very first time I was making like an application for an international passport. I've been in Nigeria my whole life. I had no international passport. So please, if you are hoping to apply to come to the UK and work as a senior, in fact, if you're hoping to leave Nigeria, to go anywhere, by all means, get yourself a passport because that, I mean, if you don't have a passport, what, <laughs> what are you doing? All right, so get yourself a valid passport because that is the number one um, documentation you need. Need. The second document you need is something that proves that you have got the right English language proficiency. Now, there are two ways you can prove this. You can have an IELT, IELT UKVI, and when I say IELT, I mean International English Language Testing System. And so for the nurses, usually if you want to come to the UK to practice as a registered nurse, you would be required to write academic IELT, right? And whether or not it is got the UKVI, the NMC will accept it. But to be on the safe side, I personally advise my friends to write the IELTS Academic UKVI. You can use your result if it is less than seven and then use it to apply for this senior carer route. Okay, I will come into, I think I've, I've made a video, my last video actually talked about why you should use your previous IELT result to apply as a senior carer. Going back to the topic at hand today, one of the ways you can prove your English language proficiency is to have an IELT UKVI. I only digressed a little bit because I've mentioned um, qualified nurses, okay, but you need I, I held UKVI to be able to apply for this for this position and the band score you need or four and above but I am going to implore you to please aim at making at least between five to six point five because the higher your band score if your employer have got five people applying for the same role for instance and they can see that this person has got a higher band score in English language and it doesn't mean that this person might be the right person for a job but you know there are lots of people applying for this role so there has to be an eliminating process so give it your best attempt if you hit anywhere between five and above you stand a better chance of you know getting this job in your favor the second way you can prove that you have got the right English language proficiency is using your university degree or your master's or your PhD to apply through a website called UK Actors. Now, if you go to the UK Actors, you are able to upload the documentation you have from your university, okay? I think they, at the moment they are charging £140. So when you pay this, they are able to check what you have and, and issue you with a certificate, okay? Now, if if the level of the, of the of your certificate matches the English language proficiency required for the job you're coming to apply for, you are definitely going to be able to use that to prove that you've got the right English proficiency. If you have a diploma, please take to write an IELTS. I do not think it's a good invest investment of your money because it wouldn't go through. So if you have got a degree, like... um undergraduate degree or you have got masters or you have got a phd by all means use your certificate and apply 
once you've got your english language sorted please make sure that your cv your cover letter is up to date i will try and make another video that will talk about how to structure your cv how to structure your cover letter to give you a wider you know chance of being successful in your job application so as soon as you have your cvs and your cover letter everything is up to date please start applying for a position okay and that's another thing i'm going to try to do is um leave links down below for websites where legit websites where you can apply for the role of a senior carer here in the uk and i do not think there is a maximum number of applications you should make because people are driving into the uk as senior carers in their numbers the more application you are making the more chances you are of getting this job so the fourth document you need for this application is your certificate of sponsorship so you've done all the previous steps i've mentioned and you've applied for this role and finally an organization have contacted you you've done your interview a state like <laughs> you were successful they've offered you this job and they've given you your certificate of sponsorship that is a legit document that seals the deal okay and as soon as you have your cos you can actually you know write a resignation letter to where you're working back home and say all right this is it i need to resign from my position because you know that your place in the uk has been sorted okay so once you have your cos make sure that you know you've got the name of your employer it states your terms of employment how many years the employment is for and all of those fine details that you can find on your COS because you are going to need all of that to make your application. So another thing you need is a police report, a police clearance from your home country. Okay. Um, my own background was coming into the UK to study, like do my top up from diploma into a degree. But while I was registering um, with the NMC, on the nmc website um i had to do a police check i mean i've been in the uk for more than one year at the time i was doing it but because i've lived in nigeria for more than 10 years i needed to do a police check so for the purpose of this job you need to clear yourself you need to do this police check okay and add it to your um, document you need for your application very very important all right there are some list of countries they need to test for tuberculosis before they come to the uk and the result of this check is part of the documentation you need for your visa application and i'm going to leave a link for the countries that will need to prove that they are free or clear of tuberculosis at the time they are making their visa application also another documentation you need to keep is all your certifications from your from your studies okay so during my own time i got my previous boss in nigeria to write me a letter of recommendation as part of my reference the company that, that is employing you might not need you to provide a letter of recommendation but if you can provide this from your previous employer i think it carries a lot of weight so that will be like a certification of good character not just for while you're getting the job but also for when you are applying for your visa okay so make sure that you have school references say for instance you're just finishing from school you have references that you can contact you know in your in your previous school and there is also two references from the last place you worked as a qualified professional now what are the benefits what are the benefits of coming into the uk as a senior carer in my previous video i'm like saying that if you are a qualified nurse honestly you do not have to like have this idea that oh because you're a qualified nurse therefore you are, you are not i can't just come to the uk and be a senior carer please die that idea just dead it leave it by the side if you are if you meet all the criteria that i've mentioned at the beginning of this video you hit all the eligibility criteria please by all means take this opportunity okay it does not mean that in the next three years before your contract finishes you will not be able to go ahead and get your pin as a registered nurse and just switch it's easy as simple as abc all right i came into this uk with a tier 4 student visa and within two years i was able to change that from a tier 4 student visa to a tier 2 skilled workers visa so the first benefit of coming into the uk to work as a senior carer is that if you have the right degree or masters or phd then you don't have to write ielts 
you don't have to write all it all you need to do is just use your university degree certificate go on the uk ethics um, website i'm gonna leave a link down below i'm just biting my mouth too much trying to pronounce the name i will leave a link down below and just up, follow the instructions it's very very well detailed on their website if you want me to make another video guiding you on how to make this application please let me know i will try as much as possible to fit that into my busy <laughs> schedule okay <laughs> Another benefit to this is that you don't have to pay the immigration surcharge, guys. <laughs> the amount of pounds I've paid for my visa processes in this country, that is going to be a separate video of its own because in the last couple of years that I've been here, visa applications alone have cost me nearly £20,000. And I'm not kidding. This is me and my family. I've got my husband and my two little boys. Between the four of us, in the last couple of years we've been here, £20,000. That is what we have paid in application. This NHS surcharge is included in that money. But if you're coming into the UK with this route, being a senior carer in the UK, you don't have to pay the surcharge. That is waived off. Okay, that saves you a huge amount of money. It's definitely something to consider. And again, you have the opportunity of bringing in your family. You can apply um, to come in to have your family join you as dependents. Let me also add that if you're coming into the UK to work as a senior carer, depending on how much you have saved, check properly if what you guys have financially can be able to support yourself, your family. If you have children, that is even things to consider really, really clearly. Child care situation in the UK is not easy. Anyone will tell you that. Okay, so I think personally that it might be better for you to come by yourself, establish your ground properly, know exactly what you're doing, see what the housing market is like, and then decide for you what you want to do. Because the organization that is in bringing you into the UK might be happy to offer you an accommodation, but that accommod accommodation might be just for one person alone. It might not be enough to you know, cater for the rest of your family. So if you're a family of four, for instance, and you're coming into the UK and your employer already have got plans of giving you a one room with shared toilet and bath and kitchen and you're bringing the rest of your family, it's, it's going to be difficult. And sometimes the landlord or whoever owns the house might not even allow you to bring in your family because what the contract says is that it's just you that is going to occupy that room. So what in, what in that means is that if you don't have any friends or relatives around where your family can squat, they are going to be staying in the hotel for God knows how long until you are able to sort accommodations out for them. So please consider coming by yourself to kind of, you know, cement the environment for yourself and your family before you can then bring them over. Now, one thing I'm going to mention that you can find on your COS is finding out if your employer is going to sponsor your stay at least for the first month after arriving in the UK. And what this means is that you would need to prove that you have sufficient funds to look after yourself in the first few weeks of coming into the UK. At the moment, what you need to put in your account back home to prove this is £1,270 um, sterling. Conversion of that to Naira or conversion of that to Ghana rate, I have no idea what it is, but your pound equivalent of the money you need to keep in your account is £1,270. If your employer is happy to sponsor you, if your employer is happy to sign that they are willing to pay for your maintenance fee, then you do not need to leave this money in your account for 28 days to support your application. So please, by all means, find out from your employer if this is something they are willing to do to help your visa application. Now, another benefit that comes with, you know, getting a visa to come and work as a senior carer is that you can get a visa of up to five years. The beauty in this is that once you are in the UK for five years, you qualify to then apply for what we call indefinite leave to remain, which is a settlement. Once you have your indefinite leave to remain, you stay on it for one year, it qualifies you to become a British citizen. Okay, and once you are a British citizen, the sky is like your starting point, you can do whatever you want. If you want to switch jobs, if you want to anything you want to do, the sky is your starting point. Okay, so have that in mind. Let that fuel you. Let that motivate you to put more effort into what you are already doing.
okay so let me also mention that for your visa application okay it depends on how many years you want to stay in the uk at the time of applying if you want to stay in the uk if you want to go ahead and apply for a five years visa you are looking at paying 464 pounds and if you want to come into the uk and spend like three years for starters then you'll be paying 232 pounds if you ask me, if you're a registered nurse or you're, you're a qualified medical doctor and it is your plan to be able to get your, your required band score with IELTS in order to register with your professional body that you belong to, I think going for the three-year one might be beneficial for you. Well, if you put your mind to it, you might be able to hit the required band score you need to register with a professional body. And if you are able to do this within three years, it means that you don't have long to kind of finish the contract you have. And that's another thing you have to keep an eye on, guys. Before you sign your contract, you need to find out if there is an exit fee. Say you want to leave your contract before your time, the time you sign is over. Find out if there is any exit fee you need to pay okay because this is very important if you are going to go from being a senior carer to being a nurse and you are required to pay for instance five thousand pounds to be able to make that move I, I personally i won't be paying it i'll stay there until my contract is over okay unless the people i'm going to work for they will be happy to pay that care home or they'll be happy to pay whichever company is sponsoring me currently for me to make that migration to a new employer. But if such plan is not in place, please be careful about moving from your contract to join another employer when your contract is still valid. Then last but not the least um, benefit is that the visa application is fast tracked if you're applying from outside the uk you are aiming to get the result of your visa application within three weeks and this is like the fastest for if you're applying in the uk is longer but if you're applying from outside of the uk is really really quick it's a priority service that you are getting so please consider coming into the uk as a senior carer in 2022 for now there is no news about you know taking this visa route off the government website or scrapping it it's still open everyone is still allowed to come into the uk using this using this um, visa route but no one knows because we recently just have a new prime minister we don't know what changes her the new government is going to bring in i feel like this video have gone on for too long but i sincerely hope that by making this video that I've been able to answer some of the questions you have around coming into the UK to work as a senior carer. So thank you for being here with me. Thank you for watching this video. Another thing I'm going to try and do is make a separate video um, about people that, have, that don't have any healthcare background. Say people that are not nurses, not doctors, not allied health professionals, but that want to come into the UK to work as care assistants. I'm going to try and make a video detailing how you guys can go about it because this opportunity, there is also space for care, health, you know, healthcare assistants to come and work in the UK. So it doesn't matter if you're a nurse, it doesn't matter if you've worked in a hospital or not, that opportunity is open for everyone to try and apply. So I will try and make another video explaining how you can also get that done so until my next video stay fit stay healthy look after yourself god bless you